world so I can look for the link. Um, so, hey, everybody, we're live. Uh, it's going to be directly shared to uh, the Racing on the Rock page. Okay. All right. Everybody, bear with us. We're, uh, we're getting the links and everything out. I'm going to put that up here right now, in fact. Just got to get... There we go. All right. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Justin and I are both very excited to talk about this car. All right. All right. Justin, you can still hear me all right? Yep, here you go. Okay, cool. I got that shared out. We'll get this shared into a couple of different places. Oh, good times, man. Da, 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 da. But I was telling Justin before, uh, it's been a crazy day. Absolutely crazy day. So, uh, all right, cool. I've got it shared out into a couple of different places. Going to do a few more here. All righty. All right, so uh, I'm ready to go ahead and get started. I've got it shared out a few different places. I think we'll get some people in here. Uh, hey, Derek, how are you? Appreciate you jumping in here with us. You uh, you jumped in early, so that's good. Now, where do I see the comments? So on... Uh, uh, you can either go to the YouTube, the live stream, and you can uh, just make sure you mute it. And you can see them come in there. Uh, that's probably the best place to watch it is on our YouTube channel at Racing on the Rocks. Yeah, that's where I am. Yeah. Uh, on the live stream, you should see the comments rolling in with it. All righty. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to get in here. <clears throat> Make sure it's all posted everywhere. It's really funny the uh, the the like preview of it uh, is funny. Me and you are both like really focused, but uh, we're starting to get some folks in here. So for those who are just joining us, um, I'm Jesse from Racing on the Rocks. We have Justin Hoback from Hoback Racing. Uh, Justin and I both had these cars. Uh, the Axial RBX 10 Rift. We, we both had early access to do some uh, work on these cars and, and do some testing. And uh, I will say this, if you guys are listening on the YouTube, uh, feel free to share the post, get it out. We'll get it out to more people. The more people we can get it in on here, uh, the more it'll, uh, it'll just help everybody because we're going to start doing some question answering, stuff like that. So uh, all that kind of fun stuff, make sure to share it. But uh, Justin, I want to give you the opportunity to kind of take the lead here. Uh, what do you think about the release? And what do you think about the car just at a very general level? What are your thoughts, concerns, anything like that? I love it, man. Uh, it, it's completely blown me away. I mean, after so many RCs over the past few years coming out and, uh, you know, every time a new RC would come out, we would hope that it was either a rock bouncer or that it would – or that it at least had some components that we could use on rock bouncers because we've been pretty much using components of other cars to build rock bouncers for the past couple of years. And uh, when this came out and, uh, you know, it actually was the real thing. And, uh, you know, I thought there's no way that they built a RC rock bouncer you know, after seeing the other things that come out, but this thing is, is the real deal. It's, 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 it really is a RC rock bouncer in every way. It's not something else that's been made into a rock bouncer. They didn't take any shortcuts and, and use some parts from something else mm -hmm. uh, to make this rock bouncer. This is just straight up rock bouncer all the way. Pretty much everything about it just says rock bouncer. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, in fact, uh, one one of, I want to address 
the the big thing here, uh, and we're actually we just jumped to being live on Facebook. Uh, one of the comments that Harley Designs made a big kind of uh, you know I don't want to say fuss, but a big distinction about, and I've seen a little bit of this online. This is not a bomber. Like this is nothing, nothing, no carryover. The trailing arms in the back are different. Uh, the four link in the front, I, I, I'm thinking is different. I'm not 100% sure, but this is a 100% different car than a bomber. I've seen people say like, it's just a bomber with a new axle underneath it. And that could not be further from the truth. That's right. That's right. It's, it's not a bomber in any way. Uh, it would take some, some serious work to even bolt up bomber parts onto this or, mm -hmm. or, um, both these parts onto a bomber. Uh, I mean, it can be done, but they're mm -hmm. not the same. So one of the first questions that we have coming in and guys who are just now jumping in with us, feel free to throw questions out. That's what we're here for. This is a Q and a about this car. Uh, Justin and I have had this car for about three months now, uh, two and a half, three months, something like that, a little over three months, maybe. So we're here to talk about this car. Uh, the first question we have is how is the slow speed modulating, uh, in the ready to run car, the it, it's it's not a rock crawler like you would see from an SCX 10 or anything like that. It definitely from the factory ready to run doesn't have like low end. Uh, and what I mean by you're not going to be able to put your tires up on the top of a rock, get it where it's, you know, kind of in a stuck position and, and crawl over it. Uh, you're really going to have to carry some momentum. Uh, my initial grievance with this car was just that, that there was kind of no low end bump power that you had to kind of drive with a more momentum, more fluidity in the, in the driving style. Uh, it will cog on you at low speeds, but once you get kind of the driving style on how to avoid that, uh, it's not really an issue. You know, you just can't fine tune rock crawl with this machine like you would an SCX 10. Uh, what do you think, Justin? Yeah, I would say it's definitely a more high speed racer and uh, there there's not much slow about it. I mean, it will go over obstacles faster than other things would. In the past, you had to go over things a little bit slower because the buggy just couldn't handle it. This mm -hmm. will go over it faster and it will handle it better. So slow going slow is not really an issue when you're racing and you can do it faster with this. Yeah, that, that's a really good point because I found myself kind of checking up things. Like if I'm going up a hill or on a trail, like, you know, you really want to build speed at the bottom of the hill and start shooting the car up. Uh, I find myself like checking the car, like doing a checkup and it really doesn't need to. There's so much travel in the front end. Uh, and the way that they've got the front end set up is, is it's pretty soft. It's pretty responsive. Uh, it's not the softest in the world, but it's way softer than any kind of uh, Axial Wraith or any other bomber that's come from the factory. Uh, you can really run the front end of this car into something and it soaks it up pretty well. Uh, I've talked to Justin a little bit before about, you know, how he likes to set his cars up and how I like to set my cars up. And suspension wise, uh, Justin, I'll give you an opportunity to kind of answer with how you do this. But the way that I like to run my rock bouncers for higher performance uh, is having a little bit of a slower front end that a slower rebound, but a little bit softer. So what they've done is, you know, if you hit an obstacle, it'll soak it up, but it won't compress out. And I really like to run my, my back end with, you know, almost no fluid and a really lightweight fluid. Uh, if you can see the rear end shocks are 140 millimeters, they're huge. And uh, I run mine really fast because I like to hit the front end hard and let the rear end just soak up whatever else comes behind it. Uh, Justin, what do you think about uh, the suspension on this car? Um, I like the suspension like it is, but I'm actually a little bit the opposite of you yeah. on that. I like my front end to soak up a little more, and I like my rear end to be slower because I don't want it to rebound fast and, and flip me over. As, mm -hmm. I'm, as I'm launching out the top of the hill, I don't want that rear end to have too much uh, rebounding and causing me to nosedive as I'm launching out the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, as it is, I, I honestly have not messed with the suspension on mine at all. I put the 30 weight oil in it and have not adjusted it one bit. And I like it like it is. It does have that, that true 
one to one rock bouncer feel where a lot of the one to one rock bouncers are using a small rock or ledge or something like that at the bottom to launch them all the way out the top of the hill. They're not keeping their tires on the ground the entire way up the hill. Part of the way up that hill, at least, is they're flying through the air and they're flying up that hill. Their tires aren't even on the ground. So this this performs a lot like that, a lot like a one-to-one -one in that you can hit something small at the bottom of the hill and you can launch all the way to the top. And I'm not talking about you know, a little ledge either. I'm talking five, six foot hills. You can hit something small at the bottom of that and launch all the way up there. Yeah. When we talked to Randall about how he he programmed this ESC, one of the things that he mentioned to me was, uh, or excuse me, Randall, I mean, the guys at Axial, uh, at Randall's the developer who built this car. Uh, he really wanted the ESC to have this crazy low end punch like you would see in a, in a real rock bouncing scenario where, you know, you can sit at the bottom of something, yank the trigger and just, you know, shoot to the top site type scenario. Uh, and I really do think that the ESC is programmed really well. I think that this does come back to like a kind of driving style, just learning how the car behaves. Uh, there is a stock class in a lot of the racing leagues. Uh, this is going to be a really good car to race in the stock class because the electronics are manageable. The stock electronics are not going to do anything crazy for you. Uh, you know, they're not going to blow the brakes off this thing, but it's got more than enough power, especially on 4S. Uh, now, I want to I want to answer some of these questions that we're getting on YouTube. Uh, if you guys are on Facebook putting questions, please come to our YouTube. I'm not sure if Facebook comments are coming through. So if, if you're posting comments and we're not seeing them on Facebook, just come to the YouTube and start posting comments. We actually added the Facebook live feed afterwards uh, and the YouTube was first. So I think I'm only seeing uh, YouTube stuff right now. But uh, Derek says, do the open diffs need to go? Figured that that was a mandatory thing for entry level drivers. That will be a mod you'll do when available. So uh, do you want to speak to the fact that there is an optional locker that's available? Yeah, so the there is an optional locker available. Um, I have the locker in, in my center diff. So that's that's something that we're talking about. You know, it's not just a front and rear diff. It's also a center diff. So I put the locker in my center diff, which is inside the transmission. I didn't want to um, I didn't want to I didn't want to go back into the transmission and I didn't really want the front and rear to be pulling independent of one another as I'm going up a hill. I can see some situations where that might help. But, you know, I didn't, it's not worth going back in the transmission to me. Um, but the open diffs, uh, they're doing great. I mean, I, yeah. I really yeah. don't, I really don't feel like, oh, I, I need a locker. I mean, yeah. the yeah. Open diffs are, it's, it's cool that you can put a locker in there and I may have one with a locker um, or lockers in both. Uh, I, I ordered me a couple of these uh, RV pins <laughs> today. There you go, man. Uh, well, it's Even cool. though I already got one, one's not good enough. I ordered a couple more. Yeah, I, I, uh, I talked to Axial and told them that I needed to order another one. But I will say it is a really special feeling knowing uh, that this is the first orange one that ever came out. This is number one on the production list ever. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put this one as a trophy, I think, and I have to order another one to compete with this year. Uh, but I'll, I'll speak to what you just said about the open diffs. Uh, this is the complete ready to run. I don't have a uh, locker in my center differential. Now, for those who are a little bit foreign to that idea, basically, uh, if you see the front tire spins and the rear tires are not, and vice versa, if I spin the rear tires, the front don't spin. So the front and rear uh, are not connected together. Uh, something that is interesting is it's also, like we were saying, it's open diffs in the, di in the differentials on the axles too. So, you know, uh, it, those are open diffs. One is spinning one way or the other. Is the other way. Um, I had someone point out on one of my uh, YouTube videos that uh, it looks like the one million weight fluid is really thin because if you see here when I do this, when I just spin it with my hand, you know, it's completely open. There's almost no resistance. I, I don't know what it is inside that that differential design, um, but I can tell you this: that once the car is running and it's moving forward, the one million weight diff fluid is really strong. I put a video up on uh, 
Yeah, it's a spool when they're locked together. But uh, I put one or I put a video on our YouTube of me climbing a hill and it shows you even when one tire has significantly more traction than the other, they're still both spinning everything, you know, front to back, rear, front, left, right. Everything spins together. The the open diff solution, in my opinion, is really for those scenarios when, you know, you, you jump the car and you load everything down one tire has a ton of traction and the other three may not be planted yet when you know it's uh, axle axle locked and it's locked in the center you'll get this you know kind of one tire will shoot the car into a different direction left right or you know shoot it up in the air if it's the rear tires uh what it does it builds a system of you know like a like a it's it's like a, a buffer system so if you're not as fast of a driver with your hands it'll kind of drive a little bit for you. It's a little bit of like a safety net. Uh, it makes it a lot more fun to drive just for the everyday person. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to get this car, climb a hill and have a great time with it. You're going to be able to hand it off to your son or daughter, and they're going to be able to have, a you know, be able to climb the hill and not just shoot it into space and it break into a million parts. Uh, Cause the open differentials are also a part saver too. Um, but you know, I really think that it's the right move right out of the box. I personally will not put lockers in here. I just really don't think that you need to. Uh, I think that's a fair assumption. I might and I might buy another one of these and put locker locker in it, but it will definitely change how you drive this vehicle for sure. Uh, our next, the next question is: Is this sway bar I have on my car a custom add-on? Yes, please don't look at it. This was for uh, some really quick testing. Justin actually has my uh, sway bar for this vehicle. Now, the, if you haven't seen the files or the um, the the specs, I have I have our, uh, our our nice manual here, and we'll go through that if you guys have any questions. But that is actually the sway bar that is supposed to be uh, on this vehicle. If you look uh, right here, whoops, wrong end. If you look right here, that's actually where the sway bar mount is built in, and uh, it built. It's a great system, and uh, it's being an option part that you can buy a little bit later on. It's a really, really good car. I was surprised because, uh, you know, a lot of people were chiming in and saying, oh, the torque twist is really bad. The torque twist, torque twist. But that transfer case does a pretty decent job of making it not as bad as you would think. Uh, when I drove it around here in my yard, you know, before I did anything, there was some torque twist. But you can watch the axial videos where they're climbing the hills with no sway bar. It was, a, I mean, I was really impressed. There wasn't that much torque twist. You know, if you go watch the bomber preview video, you know, as soon as the, as soon as you hit the gas in the bomber, it was completely back on that one side. Uh, I really think the transfer case in this is not only scale and, and lets them do, you know, driver side axle dumps on both sides, but it really does help kind of offset some of that. Uh, Justin, what do you think about this car not having a sway bar in the ready to run? Uh, I think it, I think it works. Okay. Uh, I would, I would probably add the sway bar. You know, it's going to be an axial option. Uh, mm -hmm. This one right here is going to be an axial option part, so you'll be able to buy this sway bar separately. Um, so it's not like they're going to be hard to get. You're not going to have to probably pay $50 for a Vanquish one or something like that. I'm sure Vanquish will come out with one, or who knows, maybe even Hoback Racing will come out with a sway bar. I've heard, I've heard Hoback Racing's got, uh, got quality parts coming out. Yeah, so... Uh, that's exciting. But uh, yeah, I think I like it with the sway bar, but mm -hmm. it's not a huge deal if it doesn't have it. So yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, Derek, I'll get the part. Anyone that requests parts numbers, uh, I'll come back after this video is over and I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll throw out some part numbers uh, from our catalog here. And that way you guys can have them on hand. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Do you have part numbers for lockers? RC driver broke a front axle. Um, so in the in his video, he does break a front axle. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, Justin. I know you you went through a couple axles. I'm still running the ones that came out of the box. Uh, all good and dandy. Yeah, I don't know what RC driver broke. I haven't seen that video yet. But I did have uh, one of the pins that was in one of the universals uh, mm -hmm. kind of migrate out a little bit. I'm not sure if that's what he broke. If you if you saw it, did he actually snap the shaft? I don't I don't think he snapped the shaft. I, I would be I would be really hard pressed because I've run universals in every rock bouncer I've yes. had. Never had that issue. 
and these these universal shafts are way bigger these are six millimeter mm -hmm. and they're way beefier uh if you're familiar with the vanquish vxd universal shafts these are very similar to them but bigger these are six millimeter uh stubs six millimeter shafts six six millimeter where they go into the locker so i i'd kind of be shocked if he broke an actual axle shaft especially with open diffs i yeah. i mean i've been beating the crap out of this i i don't really see that happen i did have one of the pins migrate out of the universal a little bit and i was able to uh put it in a vice and press it back in there yeah I, and i want to say too i said it in my my unboxing <laughs> video in my phase one build video too i am astonished at how strong this car is you and i went we took him out to uh, a pretty serious like rock garden with some hills and stuff and uh, I want to talk about the two-speed option, um, so, you know, if that's even necessary, because in the one-speed option here, you, you know, I, you had it in the one-speed, and you cranked it, smashed a rock, and, like, everything was good. I think you may have broke some plastic on the inside. Yeah. What do you think about the durability of this car? Because I beat the absolute tar out of mine, and, uh, I mean, it's got some love marks on here, but yeah. still truck, and I haven't had any issues. Well, I mess with a lot of armas a lot because i i like to do things that are just stupid when it comes to jumping stuff at, like that and uh i'll say this thing is uh it's as tough as an arma i mean you can treat it like an arma basher i'm and i i i jump things and i send this thing harder than i ever would with any of my other rock bouncers and uh and it takes it yeah. So let me ask you this, uh, guys that are watching and listening, do y'all have any questions? Feel free to feed them in here. Um, now that you have ordered it, uh, I got an orange ready to run. What color are the ones that you ordered today? I ordered an orange and a black and my brother, Ooh. my brother ordered an orange and a black also. Wow. That's, uh, I, I gotta say after looking at all of them, you know, my initial reaction was that the orange is obviously like, I was like, the orange is going to be so popular. It's a, it's a really rock bouncer bright orange it's not highlighter but it's not like ut orange either it's, yeah. it's pretty good um i have but, a uh, i have a pre-order list here and uh out of 10 uh five people ordered black and four people ordered the orange wow see that was what was so interesting to me is that, that like everyone ordered black how everybody was talking about black yeah i kind of figured it'd be different because you know everybody's had a black bomber for all these years and it's kind of cool to actually have some different color plastic so i kind of figured the orange would be uh, more popular too yeah me too so i want to talk about something too because um those who aren't familiar this is the smart system the smart esc system that's in these um uh the plug that comes on this esc is an ic5 connector now, what's really cool is if you get an IC5 or you get a Spectrum battery, an IC5 compatible uh, end, your controller has these little gauges on here that will actually tell you the amount of battery you have left in your battery based on how many lights are lighting up. Uh, it's just part of their smart system. There's a really, really, uh, that's a really cool option, but I didn't have a battery that had the IC5. Um, because of actually you, uh, you know, a year ago or whatever, I bought some machines from you that had EC5 connectors. Yeah. So uh, they work just fine. They connect. They just don't have the option of having the battery, you know, telemetry essentially. And yeah. um, EC5 is what you want to have on your batteries. Uh, I always tell people if you can run the spectrum and run the smart system, that's a little bit easier. Just kind of makes a fine fit and finish there. But uh, EC5 will work. Amazon batteries are great. Spectrum's the best probably in terms of just compatibility across the board with this car. Um, and uh, that's what you need. Now, in terms of chargers, I had someone reach out to me about what charger to use. As long as you get something that can charge either a three cell or four cell LiPo battery. So go on whatever Google or what have you, uh, 3S, 4S LiPo charger, and you'll get what you need. Uh, one of the best things is uh, the battery tray. I didn't grab a 5,000 uh, milliamp battery, which I may do, um, but I want you to talk about the chassis, the chassis design, and uh, what you think about this entire setup right here. Oh, it's great, uh, especially having that battery tray in there, man. That's something we've been fighting with uh, 
rock bouncer for the past couple of years as batteries flying out of rigs on, during the races because all the rock bouncers we've been running the past few years were all custom built and none of them really had a proper uh, battery tray so you're always seeing people's batteries go flying and stuff like that so it's awesome to be able to uh to just strap a battery in there and not have to worry about it Well, while he's gone, I said I'll go through some of the questions that I see here. Yeah, please. Um, I want to say while you're looking at that, uh, fifty-two hundred uh, milliamp, fifty C battery, and this bad boy is a thick. Oops, sorry, I just hit my microphone there. This is a big battery. Axial's done an awesome job of letting you have a ton of room up front. Uh, this whole battery right here fits perfectly snug down in there. Uh, that's a huge battery, a lot of weight up front. So they gave you the option to run a giant battery, which is what I run uh, to get a lot of run time out of this. But also if you want, want to run a shorty pack or anything like that, this is also an area where you can add weight to the front. You know, in a competition scenario, I might add weight to the front. Uh, I'm a big believer in limiting the front axle travel and uh putting weight up front to to make this thing balance and behave in the air like you want but i'm sorry to interrupt go ahead oh someone had asked the question if all the all three spools were the same yes the diffs and the spools are the same for all three and uh, looks like dustin and girding answered that question another question uh, i guess the rc driver uh guy broke the axle housing not the shaft someone uh mentioned that so broken axle housing apparently so yeah he said it was a 30 degree wetter 33 degree weather and he came down a hard hit on one corner uh so you know if it's really cold outside be mindful of the plastic and, and i want to mention something really quick before we go too far uh the plastic upgrades in this car compared to the bomber are second to none one of the things that probably struck me the most is the fit and finish of this car uh, obviously like the chassis you know uh what you would expect there's a little bit of like just very mild flexibility in the chassis. But when it comes to the plastics down here on the axle, uh, the hubs, the knuckles, the entire, you know, axle, the things that need to be hard and sturdy, uh, they're they're perfect. And those hubs fit well. The C or uh, the knuckles fit well. The shock mounts are really strong and everything is very tight and polished in terms of that. When it comes to, you know, everything going together really nicely and being snug and not having, you know, soft plastic where you could strip a screw or anything like that. This is not going to be an issue on this truck. This is really a sturdy vehicle. Like you can, I've run it into everything pretty much. <laughs> it's really sturdy. Yeah. I haven't ran into any issues with soft plastic or any plastic stripping or anything like that. It's, it's all good. Yep. Uh, I'm seeing here, uh, you know, Colton chimed in so they did a great job balancing details, durability, and functionality. It looks great, and it will perform better than any ready to run I've had, and I've pretty much had them all. It's pretty. That's pretty. I'll be honest with you. Uh, as far as far as a ready to run car, this is this is it. This is the hardest car you can beat in all kinds of different things. Um, I, I want to you know let you guys ask some questions, but I'm actually going to start just going from the front of this truck to the back. Uh, these tires, Justin. What do you think about the cut and sight uh, super super uh, swamper boggers that we're seeing here? The IROC boggers. They're awesome. Uh, I mean, the the size and and the weight of them. Uh, I don't remember the exact weight, but I did compare them to the lightest tires that I have, which are some 1.9s, just some little uh, smaller 1.9 tires. And these are lighter. Uh, these are the lightest tire and wheel combo that I have, period. Um, they're glued to the wheel. I was a little bit skeptical about that at first. I've never really had anything that wasn't a true bead lock and these, these tires being glued to the wheel. I thought, eh, I'm not too so sure about that, but thinking back, I've never really had much trouble with my Arma, you know, basher tires uh, coming unglued off the wheel. And so far these are holding up great. So that saved us that weight of having those extra bolts and mechanisms and all that kind of stuff that goes into making a big lot wheel and and they haven't come off yet so they're they're doing good and I'm, I'm loving how lightweight they are the compound of the tire 
is perfect. I mean, just absolutely perfect. The tread height is not too tall so that it bends over. I like that it's a, a short tread height so it can't flex over as it's going over obstacles. Uh, it really just gets grip correctly. Yeah, one thing I want to say too about the compound is uh, I've mentioned it time and time again. We put some miles on this truck and uh, I'm sorry about the dog, you guys. I don't know if y'all can see those tread blocks are getting kind of worn now, uh, but they're still very, very tough. Uh, this, it, like, this will be my new 2.2 tire. Uh, I'll be switched away from the Proline stuff just because of what you said. It's such a lightweight tire. It's so wide that it just kind of floats on top of everything, but it digs really well too. Uh, this is a this is one of the major home runs of this ready to run for me is this wheel and tire package. I'm over the moon about this for sure. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to put them on some of my other rigs now and and run some of my other rigs. Uh, I mean. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy these tires to put on other rigs as well. So Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing I actually talked to Axial about in the development phase. I was like, you guys got to sell me some more of these before uh, before anything else, before y'all go public because I need them. So yeah. let's talk about the axles. Uh, I, that question actually just came in. Uh, new 14-bolt replica axles. Uh, one of the things that was highlighted that I didn't really highlight in my video is uh, the pin system so you know in the previous vehicles they had the like drop-in ball joints that you screwed in and that's what actually connected the axle to the hub and now they use a pin system so you don't ever have to worry about over tightening it to where it'll bind in the steering and you also don't ever have to worry about it uh, being too loose and the bolt falling out and then losing your little ball joint thing it's it's like talk about just pain in the butt that was the worst part of ar60s in my opinion was having to maintain those knuckles and get those all set up correctly uh super strong pin uh, ring and pinion all that kind of fun stuff what do you think about these axles uh justin yeah the ar60s got sloppy real quick with the uh the knuckles and the hubs uh being single shear and with these being double shear the knuckles are just uh double shear in every way and that pin that you're talking about that goes down in there on the on the top and on the bottom that pin is a three millimeter pin hardened pin and it's in there tight i mean i've had to remove one of them and i had to get some really good needle nose and to get it up out of there it's in there tight there's not any slop there's not uh there's not any screws that are threaded in that are actually holding it together there are some screws that are holding the pin in but there's there's no screws that are going to get loose and and wiggle loose and and get slop in your front end everything's double shear so there's really not a chance of much loosening up i think it's going to take a long time before we start seeing some slop in in those knuckles i i haven't seen any yet yeah and one thing i'd like to highlight too is uh we both had option parts for uh option knuckles and we both put them on and then we both took them off because uh, these these knuckles that are built in, let me make sure it's the knuckle here. Uh, yeah, it's the knuckle that has the built-in steering stop on it. And basically, uh, where the AR60 and the option part knuckles, you know, they're just two flat uh, sides. The, the product on this car right here actually has a steering stop, so you're not going to over-articulate the steering to, you know, break an axle or anything like that. But also... Uh, it just generates a safer situation for the car. The plastic, it, it, you know, having that extra plastic there is just going to make it more more strong uh, or stronger. And uh, I think it's really great. The steering stops are a big win, in my opinion. Yeah, the steering stops, because we have that servo saver, uh, the steering stops are pretty much required because the servo saver allows some flex in the steering. So because you have that flex in the steering, the steering stops have to keep those universal joints from turning too far and they're doing their job and they're working really well. So it's, it's all working really well together. The steering stops are, are saving parts. The servo saver is saving the servo. You know, I would love to throw a shift RC servo on there like immediately, but mm -hmm. I kept the stock servo on here just to see how long it would hold up. And, uh, I'm pretty amazed that Servo Saver is holding it. It's slow. 
yeah. in my opinion, it's a little bit slow, uh, slower than what I would want to race with, uh, just to have that quick uh, reaction time if you need to correct something really quickly. Compared to what I'm used to, it's yeah. slow. Compared to other stock RTR rigs, it's it's not slow. So yeah. And I'll say this too, uh, it could it could just be chance of the wind or what have you. Um, but both of our cars were, I guess, considered prototype cars or you know early edition. Um, the servo I'm running right now is the uh, S614S. It was pretty quick, and we actually went side by side. And mine was a little bit faster than yours, uh, so much where I, I couldn't, uh, you know, I don't have an issue. I'm not going to have to deal with the servo upgrade unless I just completely blow this one to different pieces. Uh, now, what I was showing on screen here is that play that you're talking about in the steering servo. But I, I kind of want to point something out that, you know, I thought that this was going to be an issue because if you listen, that's not activating the steering servo there. It's not until you hear that sound that the, the steering servo is actually being moved. All of this is in the steering servo saver, but there's not a real unpredictability to it. It doesn't drive unpredictably. Uh, you know, when you hit something, the servo saver really allows it to move and then comes back in uh, really well. It doesn't, you know, it's not squirrely like I've seen in a bunch of like, you know, if you ever have an AVC system turned up all the way and you try and yeah. climb the hill, it'll like have, it'll like have a seizure on you. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've not experienced that with this truck. Now, this AVC system does come in this truck. Uh, and I personally turned it all the way down, but did not disable it. And uh, it, it's worked out for me pretty well. I, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, the servo saver, um, the play that's in it, I will say that it's way stiffer than what you see like on a SMT-10. Mm -hmm. They come with servo savers. This one's very stiff. And I have not experienced any issues where it was causing me to have problems with steering. Like I don't even realize that it's there. I, I don't even think about it. This rig is, you're moving so fast, you're flying up to the top of the hill. And again, I'll, I'll compare it to an Arma Basher. They've got servo savers in them. And when you're, when you're flying up that hill and there's a lot of things happening quick and you know, you just don't even have time to think about stuff like that mm -hmm. because you're, you're flying up these hills. You're not crawling. You're not working your way up to the top. You're you're shooting up the hill, and that little slop in the steering and stuff like that, you don't even realize it at all. You never think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Derek, you mentioned something about uh, did you guys have the drive shafts installed wrong out of the box? Nope, drive shafts are good. My drive shafts came in perfect, and they're actually uh, they all line up correctly. They'll you know it spells axial when they're all you know twisted the right way and installed correctly. Mine was perfect right out of the box. No issues there. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I see Bub asking, uh, need to see those tires next to USDs. Bub, I'll tell you, these tires are the same height as a USD overall, but they're way, way lighter. I'm going to go grab a set of tires real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. So that there's, there's the answer to that. You also asked, I ran the camo this season, which do I like better? I like this better than any RC I've ever had. So that answers that question. I want to know if they plan on giving us selectable diffs. Selectable diffs. Uh, I haven't heard anything about any selectable diffs. I do see that the transmission has a, a place for a shifter on it so that you can um, shift it from first and second gear, high and low range on the transmission, but I don't all diffs locked or just the trans. Um, you can choose. Uh, RTR, all diffs come unlocked. So you can choose um, what you want to do. Right now, I have just the trans locked and I have my front and rear open. And for me, that's not really anything new. Uh, some of us at race have been putting uh, um, Yeti front diffs in our rear ends for a while now just because we want that give like like uh, Jesse talked about earlier, where if your tire grabs a rock, if you're on loose dirt, and then all of a sudden you grab a rock, uh, you want that tire to give a little bit. Uh, you don't want it to hook because the power to weight ratio on these things is insane. And they've got the power that when that tire grabs a rock, it's going to throw you over backwards or it's going to throw you side to side. It's not, a, it's not like a 5,000 pound 
uh, rock bouncer. I know I saw a lot of comparisons uh, earlier in the day to why does it have open diffs? Rock bouncers don't have open diffs. Well, the power to weight ratio on this rig is way higher than a regular rock bouncer. I know that seems crazy. You know, they're, you know, 1600 horsepower rock bouncers, but they weigh, they weigh five, 6,000 pounds. You know, a few of them are under 5,000 pounds, but they're heavy. So they're not going to get tossed around. Uh, this rig right here weighs 7.1 pounds. Uh, that that's freaking light for any RC rock bouncer. Yes. Uh, that's lighter than a bomber. Um, you know, especially if you got some upgrades on a bomber. So weighing 7.1 pounds and having all that brushless power and having these tires that, that, that will hook, that's why you want the open diffs. And I saw a lot of people earlier today saying why open diffs on a rock bouncer. That's why. And, and I'll tell you this too. I was a little skeptical at first. When you get your hands on it, it'll make sense. Um, and I want to say something too. I, I remember uh, in 2013, or I think it was somewhere around there, maybe 14. Uh, I think it was 13 or 12 or something. Um, the SEX 10 Jeep that came out, you know, someone had done the calculation on amount of power that came out to it. And if, if the SEX 10 Jeep was a one-to-one -one size, it would have came out to something like 700 horsepower and over 1200 foot pounds of torque. Like it was something crazy. And that was with a, you know, an axial stock 16 turn motor. So, you know, when you translate this to one to one, you know, you're talking thousands of horsepower in comparison. Uh, you know, if you scale it up, it's, it's just, it's, it doesn't, it looks like a rock bouncer. It behaves like a rock bouncer, but when it comes to drivetrain, it, it's not comparable just because you can get so much more power out of this and, you know, this literally weighs seven pounds and you're getting, you know, the equivalent of thousands of horsepower out of it. So it is a little bit different. Um, I want to show some tires real quick. So uh, here is the, obviously here's the rift tire right there. I'm going to show them from the side and then uh, so, uh, I'm going to show them side by side and then I'm going to show them the other side by side. So here is a, a stock bomber tire, the BF Goodrich All-Terrain. Uh, let me pull it back here just a little bit. So let me line them up. So you, first thing you'll notice is uh, a little bit similar width. I've got this on a wide axial eight, eight hole wheel beadlock, but the height is uh, very, very different there. Let's see if I can get it just straight enough there. Uh, so that's definitely bigger, wider. I have a, uh, a rip saw here, rip saw, which used to be just the big meaty tire of the axial lineup. Uh, definitely gets dwarfed on both, both uh, height and width there. I've got a RC four-wheel drive mud slinger. These are your old tires or your brothers. I can't remember. Uh, as you can see, width and uh, height, it's about the same. You know, I mean, it's still getting dwarfed a little bit, but it's comparable. And I want to show a Proline 1.9 tire. This is a 1.9 Super Swamper just in comparison to this uh, so you guys can get the full idea here. Uh, it is not even in the same, you know, it's a, it's a huge step up. Now, to show you from this angle as well, uh, see if I can put them there side by side. There's the 1.9. So pretty large difference there. RC four-wheel drive mud slinger. So kind of comparable, but it really gets lost in the width on this car. Let's see if I can make sure I get it in the frame here. Uh, axial rip saw. Definitely a little bit smaller here which again, this used to be the big tire uh, of Axial, the big wide and the bomber tires. Uh, you can see that it's a, a definitely a smaller tire all the way around. So these are the biggest, widest, uh, lightest tires that Axial's made. So I'm, I'm really pretty amazed. Uh, Bub asked if we've tried it on 3S and 4S. Uh, yes, I have. 3S is great. 4S is too much. Justin, what do you think? I agree with that. I'm running it on, on 3S. I put a 4S in it one time. There's just really not any point. On 3S, I mean, you can you can freaking launch this thing up to the top of the hill, no problem on 3S. I mean, you can, it's it's a lot. I don't yeah. know if it's a gearing ratio or what, or it's because it's lighter weight than what we're used to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably got something to do with it. You know, we're used to running 10 pound rigs. You know, I got one that's like eight and a half, nine. Mm -hmm. um so that's probably got a lot to do with it um i saw another oh someone said i wonder if 
reefs sway bars will fit this uh the answer is no these sway bar arms if i can get back in the camera these sway bar arms are a lot longer than your standard sway bar arm that goes on a, a bomber and that's what a reef is set up for these sway bar arms are like 82 millimeters long they're designed to go from the the mounting hole where they are if you could point to that jesse all the way back to over the top of the axle and they go outside the shot so these sway bar arms are 82 millimeters they're they're a lot longer than than the arms that we have out uh, currently yeah and i want to mention too that uh i personally when i first got this uh, i thought that the trailing arms were going to be the same as the bomber they are definitely not the trailing arms on this car are substantially longer uh, I can't remember the exact. I can look at it while we're sitting here talking. They're uh, they're like they're like ten millimeters longer than a, yeah, than a bomber. It's, uh, it's a big big difference. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we're so, talking about electronics. Uh, anything else? Oh, I, I want you to talk about the uh, trailing arm option part there. That the, the uh, trailing arm brace. Your experiences with that. Yeah. So my my trailing arm came with with a brace on it that's kind of similar to uh what comes on a on a kit bomber and i feel like the that made the swelling the trailing arm too rigid um and i did break uh, a trailing arm and i also broke another trailing arm when i hit a concrete block doing like 30 miles an hour i snagged the back wheel on it and i broke the eyelet on the end of the uh trailing arm so some people someone up above uh Derek horner said uh what parts break that's that's the answer that's my answer to that question i've broken two trailing arms that's the only thing i've broke on this rig is two trailing arms and like i mentioned earlier the uh the axle pin that that migrated out a little bit but i was able to push that back in so if, that, if you can see i'm sorry to interrupt you if you can see the the trailing arm kind of thins out right about here and you broke it on this uh on the frame side right yes Okay. Uh, my experience, I don't have that in there, but what I do have in, in Axial, when I talked to him, made it very clear that uh, it's a really good idea to keep this part in there is inside the trailing arm. I've got an extra uh, like pivot ball in here and that pivot ball is in there to help keep the structural integrity of these arms. Keep that in there uh, because I have had zero issues from my trailing arms. Uh, and I, again, have, have beat this car uh, pretty bad. And I spent a lot of time in the dirt, like soft dirt too. But, you know, I would hit soft dirt, rocks, big ledges, big hills, and uh, I'd hit them almost wide open. <laughs> and it just take it over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, someone asked about the plates on the trailing arms. Um, I'd probably just either do aluminum trailing arms, full on aluminum trailing arms, or I would just stick with the stock trailing arms. I think that that give uh is actually keeping it from breaking and, and giving it flexibility whereas when you put that plate on that plastic trailing arm i think it's making it too rigid and that's causing the ends of it to snap yeah i would agree with you uh let's see here vanquish trailing arms for yeti or bomber will they fit no they will not oh. uh, they're they're 10 10 millimeters longer is what justin was saying just a few minutes ago um so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, if you guys have any questions in particular, please feel free to uh, jump in here and let us know because, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I I'll tell you guys some of the ideas uh, that I have. Uh, I'll tell you about something I ran into. Um, someone just chimed in. Is there a place for a second or dual shock? There is actually another mounting hole for a second shock. It's actually right behind this bar right here. But... This is a but. Uh, I ran into issues when I moved my shock forward with this uh, sway bar mount. Uh, when this shock got leaned forward and put in this direction, uh, I had a real issue with adjusting the spring load collar. There was a little bit of interference here. And if I really, you know, pulled, extended the entire droop of the rear end, I ran into a little bit of contact here. So I don't think that you could get an entire shock in here possibly. Uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of plan. What I did was I had the car, uh, I had it in the very back position back here, and then I had it in the very front position uh, of the shock tower on top. And uh, I tried to do that just to make the rear end a little bit softer with the stock springs. Um, 
So it was just something I ran into. Uh, probably is not an issue. Probably I was doing something wrong, to be honest with you. So let's see. Um, uh, dual shocks, not in the front, possibly in the back. You could make it work. I don't think either of us have tried to do that. Uh, the pivot balls on this machine are bigger than uh, the bomber. One thing to note, uh, Randall from uh, Axial just chimed in on that. Uh, these pivot balls are huge. And what's really cool is you get uh, really, really nice, strong uh, rods here on the uppers in the back and all in the front. Uh, the pivot balls are, uh, Randall, you can probably help me out here. They're either, what are they, stainless steel or titanium? I can't remember. Steel? I'm pretty sure they're stainless. Okay, so stainless steel uh, pivot balls on the lowers uh, for all of these. You'll see there's stainless steel up here and at the axle and in the trailing arm and at the axle back here as well. And that's that seems to be all the way across the board. Uh, it's a big deal, y'all. That's 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 axial saving you headaches. Uh, having not having to make that upgrade again, they really put like they put the money in this car in the right places where it'll 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 work. Uh, and and I'll be honest, I was shocked when I found out how much it cost. I know that I had seen some prices tossed around, but dude, that's that price point for this car is incredible for the ready to run. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you get a bomber, you know, for four fifty, and it's got a brush motor in it, and you pretty much have to upgrade everything on it and this mm -hmm. this comes pretty you know i'm i'm not really just too worried about upgrading much on this thing i mean it's pretty much ready to go i do yeah. see one question that i'd like to answer sure. uh, An anthony garcia says how's the shocks are they leaking uh the shocks anthony are totally different they have an aluminum shock body that's very similar to like a proline power stroke where if you're familiar with the Proline Power Strokes, they the O-rings go inside the aluminum body. And with other shocks in the past from Axial, like are on the Bomber and the Wraith, the O-rings are actually sitting inside uh, a little plastic part that threads in there. With these shocks, the way they're machined, your O-rings are inside the aluminum body, and then they've got a cap behind that to hold them in there. So your O-rings are between aluminum shot body and the stainless steel shot rod. And no, we haven't seen any leaking from the shots yet at all. There, there are a lot more, uh, there's a lot more technology that went into these shots. Uh, you know, these are more like a, a real racing shot, more like a pro line power stroke. Uh, so not like, you know, a SCX 10 shot. Yeah, and, and I'll say this too because if you if you've seen it in the video, uh, I have a little bit of shock, uh, like some dirt on here. It's just because I did a horrible job of putting oil in there. I got I made a huge mess. So if you look in and there's a little bit of dirt down here, I just did a bad job, made a mess. These shocks have been awesome for me. I mean, you can look at the front. There's there's no leaking, plenty of compression here. And again, because I don't run a whole lot of fluid in the back, uh, it's kind of you know I'm not leaking out of the back because there's not a whole lot back there. Uh, it says, well, in a one eighth scale motor fit, they fit fine in the bomber and the Yeti with trimming. I'll tell you right now, yes. it, you, it will fit. Yes. I, I have oh, put, uh, a, uh, 14, 15 motor in mine. It's the five fifty can. Yeah. And it, it will fit. Damn. I'll tell you what, man, they, they really did a good job with real estate in this car. Uh, because I don't know if you guys can see it in there. But that's that's the transmission and that's the transfer case. So uh, hold it flat here. Uh, transmission and transfer case is that black piece next to it. Next to it, having issues talking here. And then uh, from the front, just barely, you can see the motor in there. My point is, there's not a lot of real estate in there. It is very snug. And uh, we actually getting to the receiver box. We had to do some opening to go through this entire thing. And one of the things I noticed is getting to everything can be a little difficult. I will say that it is a little bit of a chore uh, trying to get into the meat and get things. You know, if you're going to pull everything out, break the entire car down, it is a little bit hard to get into everything. Um, and I chose one way to go in. Justin, you chose another way uh, to get to the receiver box. I actually went through the hood and came down and actually... I was just trying to see, you know, what's what's the best way to do it. And if you want to get to the receiver box through here, if you can see, 
there's a battery tray and that's your receiver box right there. I ended up having to take pretty much the whole front end apart to get in there. Um, Justin, you said you did it a different way. How did, how did you get in there? So I took the five screws that mount the chassis to the skid loose. And then I took my front shots loose at their upper mounting points. And then I flipped the chassis back out of the way and I left it attached at the rear. I just flipped it up out of the way. That's a good move. Probably a little easier than what I did. I had the whole front end taken apart. <laughs> uh, we got some, some more questions. Uh, did you did we get a tire tool? I don't think so. Uh, I think I, I I wouldn't consider this the 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 exact what we got is not going to be the exact complete package of what you guys will get. Um, you know, we got sent some prototype parts, things like that. I'm I'm sure that just like every other ready to run that comes from Axial, you'll get what you need to work on this car. Uh, you know, the basics, the little little tools and stuff like that. Uh, did the um. <laughs> Uh, what would each of you upgrade on the bouncer? If I had to upgrade this, uh, this is going to be a personal preference question. And this is just because I, I probably have more time on this car than anyone on the planet. Maybe Randall has me beat. Uh, I have put almost, I mean, it's upwards of 30, probably close to 40 hours of runtime on this car. Uh, I'm going to shorten the, the I'm going to, I'm going to go to a shorter shock in the front. That's the only thing I'm going to change, period. Other than that, it's perfect. I don't need to worry about anything else. I'm good with the electronics, good with the drivetrain. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to be running this in the stock class uh, at the Southern Rock Racing Series some this year. So in the meantime, you know, I may I'll have to revert all that stuff. But for the really high performance application, I, the only thing that I can really think of is shortening the front shocks. That's pretty much it. Justin, what do you think? If you could do one one upgrade. I would upgrade the steering servo to make it faster. Now, when I do that, that probably means I'm going to have to give up that um, that servo saver because it's a 23 tooth and most aftermarket servos are 25 tooth. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to give that up uh, to go to a faster servo. Um, that'd, be, that'd be my upgrade. Um, I did see another question that I was going to somebody. Eh, I don't know what it was. Yeah, there was, I saw a question that I had an answer to. Now I don't know. What <laughs> Feel free to go back because I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in here and talk about the low speed again. Uh, if you missed it in the beginning, we did talk about low speed crawling. If you're if you're really down and you're like in a rock crawling situation where you know a Capra or an SEX10 would shine, this is not going to be where this shines. Uh, you really need to carry some momentum with this car. Uh, the momentum will keep you going and prevent cogging. But if you're stuck, you know, one of them's in a hole and you're bellied out and you're trying to, you know, roll smoothly out of it, it's not going to happen. Uh, this car is not made to do, you know, Excel and in, in like really slow technical crawling. This is definitely going to be a car where you're going to carry some momentum through. Uh, I will balance that by saying you're not going to, you know, this is not the, uh, the laser nut car where you have to drive it at 40 miles an hour, you know, this, you can drive it at five, six, you know, four, five, six miles an hour and it'll carry its electronic, like, you know, it'll carry it, won't cog, do anything, won't have any issues. Um, but definitely some momentum is the name of the game for this particular car. Uh, I saw someone just commented, is the ESC mounted in front of the drivers? Uh, yes. It is right there. Smack in the middle of the dash. I think it's a really cool scale element. And it's really nice because you don't have to dig anything up. You don't have to open anything up to know if your ESC is having any issues. Yeah, it's cool where the ESC gets some extra air right there and you can see mm -hmm. uh, whatever flashing lights you need to see. And, and the mounting plate that it is mounted to on top of the transmission, you can't see that from the outside. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a legit mounting plate. So it you know it's nice to be able to have a, a good place to mount your ESC. We change these bombers up so much yeah. that – they really don't even end up the ESC. Everybody that I see with a bomber has their ESC mounted in a different place because we change them up so much. As far as the cogging goes, uh, like you said, you know, it's not, it's not going to crawl. It's either going to spin tires pretty quickly or it's going to launch on up the hill one or the other, but it's, it's not really just going to crawl around. Uh, so it's uh that's it. Anthony Garcia says, will a Mamba X fit? Yes, a Mamba X will fit. Uh, you know, that's what I have in mind. So I've, I've, I've done some changes to mine. So I got a Mamba X that'll fit. 
Yeah, uh, this is a this is a good one. Uh, lots of cross compatibility. I, I will say too, uh, I've owned four RC Rock Balancers before this one. Uh, I've always had an issue finding a place to mount my ESC motor, all the wires and crap. I've literally in most of my rigs zip tied it to the top of the cage just to get it out of the way. Um, it's it's been a big issue with these. It is so nice to have something that's like again the 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 motto of this truck is fit and finish is great. Everything's very polished. It's a very sound truck. It's it's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 4S help with the cogging? Maybe. I mean, 4S will just you you won't even have a nut chance to cog. It'll just blast at a million miles an hour. Uh, any LEDs on this ready to run? No. But I think it would be really cool to have some rock lights on here. Uh, just a little something different. Uh, I haven't made it that way yet, but I have a set of lights in my in my drawer outside, and I was thinking about putting them on there. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Also, uh, I know we got a couple people in here with us, so it's been really good to have everybody chatting in. Um, do, 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 do. I'll say the cogging uh, is not really been an issue. I'm I'm not a crawler, but it it's not. I would not be the slightest bit afraid to go race this in an RC rock bouncer race. I will go racing in an RC rock bouncer race. I can't wait. And I'm going to race against you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to be. The, the low speed, the cogging is not going to be any yeah. concern for me whatsoever in, in an RC rock bouncing race. Yeah. And I, I'll say this too. Uh, I personally am more of a trail guy. I've got three SCX 10s right now and they all do something different. I got a 1.9 bomber. Um, it's not got the low end control, but you can still rock crawl. I mean, you're just going to have to carry a little bit of a faster pace. It'll make it through the rocks perfectly fine. Uh, you know, you've got all the clearance in the world. You've got all the power in the world that you need. Got great tires, just really, really great stuff. Uh, it says these axles will be an awesome upgrade for the SMT10. Yes, it's a good move. Um, that, that does it flip back over easy. Um, what do you I think? Would, I would say yes because it's so lightweight. Yeah, yeah, and all the all the weight that does come from this car is down low. They did a really good, really good job balancing it. And it's also, you know, unlike the Wraith, it's not a flat top car. So you will be able to utilize the round top to kind of roll things back over, uh, all yeah. that kind of fun stuff. And the, the, it's so lightweight and the tires, you know, with that round uh, mm -hmm. roof and you rock it back and forth a few times, the tires are so big that the tires will grab the ground pretty easily. Yeah. And once they grab the ground, it's got so much power, it will just flip it right back over. Uh, somebody asked, uh, when's it going to be released to the public or at least shipped? From what I'm hearing, is going to be early February sometime. That's that's what I hear. Yeah, that's the same thing uh, that I'm hearing as well. I think the Horizon site this morning said something about uh, late January that possibly may be, you know, when they start shipping. Uh, you know, so I'm not 100% sure. We, we weren't in the information. Uh, side healing. How does it work on side healing? Uh, I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to take this out of my way and, uh, we're going to jump on the racing on the rocks Instagram page and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to, uh, I did a little photo, uh, a photo dump of everything I had. Oh goodness. Racing on the rocks Instagram. And, um, I did a photo dump of all the pictures I've taken here in the last little while. And, uh, I'm just going to show you guys some stuff some side i have some situations where i side hilled all that kind of fun stuff and just get to my instagram page here bub says am i gonna get to see it at koh uh bub one way or another probably i would i would say yes uh randall might be able to chime in that if they'll be at koh or not i i would bub. i would think that they're probably gonna be there i will be there, there. <laughs> oh, hey all right so let's get this bad boy up here all right, so um, as we're going through this, uh, y'all just keep in mind with us, this is just pictures I took along the way and just dumped everything I had. Uh, so I initially had the issue of running into the sway bar kind of uh, mount with the shock when I had it set up one way and I was just exploring different options. I thought about running it through the back of the cage like this. And if you see on my machine and any of the photos or anything, I actually drilled out that piece right there. And whenever you run it like this, you either have uh, sway bar uh, arm links that are like super, super, super long um, or, you know, they run into the chassis. It doesn't work from there. So that was a bad attempt. Don't do that. I already tried it. 
Uh, this is the day that I colored the, the wheel rings. They do not come colored from the factory ready to run. It is a nice touch. I just bought some paint pens. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, Sparks M90, but it's open diffs. The open diffs are actually awesome. Uh, here's another picture of just some paint that I did, nothing major. Uh, so here is an example of the open differentials. Uh, I don't know. Can you guys see that video okay, Justin? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So if you see here, all four tires are spinning. The left tire has, you know, obviously a little bit more traction. The left front tire has the most traction. And I think when I recorded this, I just wanted to show that regardless of the, the traction, you know, the, the one million weight diff really does do quite a bit. Uh, it's really impressive. And, and a lot of people have been able to spin the wheels with their hands and it, it'll act like an open differential. But I have been really impressed with it. Uh, I think I was just playing in this video, but in this one, you can actually see uh, this is on my YouTube as well, where one tire has a lot of traction. The other one has almost no traction and loose dirt in the rear end, but they're both still spinning. They're all four climbing. And uh, this is actually slowed down in slow-mo. And um, I actually ended up making this climb. I wanted to show, too, that these tires, man, these tires just, just kick some butt. They, uh, they're pretty cool. And it does a good job. It looks like it's hopping a lot here. There's some, you know, hop that you see. But, you know, having the open diffs also lets it not shoot in different directions when it hops. So, you know, easy climb from a standstill in, in dirt and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, it was pretty cool. Good example of the open diffs. So this is some of the terrain near my place where I was, you know, shooting this towards the bottom and you'll just shoot straight up this hill, go right over. Uh, I actually ended up getting caught on a stick, uh, which was kind of funny. I mean, it was totally airborne, just landed on the stick, came straight through the axle. A uh, lot of, lot of fun stuff there. Uh, this is, I took these cause it was just an example of the sway bar. I know that there's kind of been some question on our side about the sway bar uh, density and thickness and things like that. This is actually an Axial Yeti soft sway bar uh, that I had run through the gas tank. It's not the best look. I wouldn't pay too much attention to it, but uh, that stiffness worked really well. It got a little bit of articulation, but it controls everything um, nice and neat. Uh, and the other picture that I have here is a... Uh, Tire, tire comparison like we did earlier. And then from left to right, we have the Rift uh, Super Swamper cut and sight. Let me see if I can zoom it in here for you guys. So we have that tire that's siped. We have the Axial Ripsaw, the RC four-wheel drive Mudslinger, the Baja that came stock on, or the BF Goodrich tire that came stock on the Bomber, and then a 1.9 Proline tire. So uh, a pretty good comparison there uh, across the board. And again, there's the, the truck sitting next to it. I think, I think that's all I got. Uh, Justin, do you have any pictures or anything like that, uh, posted somewhere you'd like to see? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Um, well, uh, do we have any final questions? I'm looking around. I don't see any more questions coming in. If you guys want to shoot us your last bit of questions here, we've been on for about an hour and uh, 10 minutes. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. And uh, if you guys shoot your questions, we'll answer them. It seems like on my end, uh, no, they're still coming. For a minute, I thought maybe something had froze up and they weren't coming, but they're they're uh, they're still coming. Yeah, I uh I really like this this hosting service. It's nice to use for the podcast. I'll say this: if you're if you're not a normal listener of the show, this is actually my podcast studio. I have a podcast where I interview guys from the side by side RC, uh, you know, rock bouncers, ultra four, king of the hammers, everything you can think of. Uh, I have had guys on. We have eighty four episodes. We're releasing a new episode tomorrow morning with Eric Hagen, who is a southern southeastern. Uh, kind of guy who's been around the block for us for a long time. It's a great episode. Everything is available on our YouTube channel, and it's also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, if you guys want to support us, it's awesome. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of fun stuff, um, and leave us a review. That always helps us out. So we've got some questions coming in now. Um, what's the durability when it's fully locked? We don't know. Justin, what do you think? Uh, I think it'll be just fine, just based on seeing the the parts. Uh, you know, these these axle shafts are bigger than any aftermarket axle shafts that are out right now. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid to lock it. 
I would lock it, uh, you know, without worrying about breaking parts. Uh, would go ahead and do that. Wouldn't be afraid to, you know. Uh, however, um, it's got one million weight oil in it right now. We can still go up to twenty million, and if twenty million is not enough, we can still go up to silicon earplugs. So that's right. Um, me personally, I am not interested in locking it, um, but I would not be afraid to lock it. I'm not. The reason for me not locking it is not that I'm worried about uh, parts breaking. Uh, Chris Taylor says, what do you think about the transmission? Uh, it's a totally new transmission. It also has some very, very beefy parts in it. Um, it's kind of heavy. Uh, yeah. it, it's kind of heavy. If you, if you wanted to give up, uh, you know, some beef, you could probably save a little weight and go to uh, a smaller, like a three-gear transmission and save a little bit of weight and... Uh, and give up some beef. I, I, it's, I'm not the slightest bit concerned that it's going to break. It's very, very beefy. Uh, it's th which makes it a little bit heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say that if there's any place you want weight, it, in, you know, it's that low center section. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, how light it is, but that transmit, that transmission is probably what, uh, 30% of the entire weight of the car. Yeah. I'd say 25 to 30%. It's yeah, definitely it's, the heaviest component, especially with the motor. If you took the the skid with the transmission and the motor and the ESC on it, that's that's, that's the about far more weight than your axles. Yeah, for sure. And the Hard tires, the tires on a lot of our rigs that we run these days, the tires are are some of the heavier components of them. These tires, they don't weigh nothing. I mean, they're really light. I think we'll start seeing a lot of the competition guys switch to these once they get their hands on them. I know a lot of people love their brands and love the Tennessee cut super swampers, but it's pretty undeniable with this tire and the pattern, the pattern, the compound, all of it. It's a really good tire. Um, I want to read out the, uh, the ESC specs real quick. Uh, so it's the spectrum firma smart 130 amp brushless ESC. It's a 130 amp output. Uh, it's input voltage is 7.4 to 14.8 BEC or built-in BEC output is six volts and uh, it's 154 grams. So uh, super lightweight and a very high output. I'm trying to think if there's any other technical information that I should throw out while we're here. Um, there is uh, the programming table in here. If you're interested in doing all that jazz, uh, it's all set up right here for you to understand how it came from uh, it came from the factory. This is a good thing to keep in keep in keep in mind. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, who is gonna? Well, when's there gonna be a Hoback skid for it? Do you think there needs to be one? Are you gonna? We are you gonna run leading arms on this car? That that was gonna be my answer, uh, Bub. You know, I made that that leading arm skid for our other bouncers because I felt like there was a need for it, and there was also the need for having that transmission and all that stuff running leading arms. I'm not too concerned about making a skid for leading arms on this bouncer. Uh, the four link on the front of it handles better than any four link I've ever dealt with. I'm really not uh, really not that concerned with making one. Well, I, I'll probably make one eventually, uh, but it's not really a high priority. I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, I don't believe in going and changing a whole lot of things, uh, fixing problems that are not there. So. It's not really high priority at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do we have any other questions that are rolling in here? I'm trying to think. Um, I feel like okay. that's cool. Uh, There's one about a shift uh, shift uh, da, 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 shift servo. Will this, a shift RC servo fit with ease, Justin? Yeah, shift RC servo fit. Uh, any. Pretty much any standard servo will fit in there. Have you talked about the uh, the way the servo is positioned in the axle? And it's like it's at an angle. So we see some uh, you know some aftermarket companies that that offer things where the servo is behind the axle, but then the servo hangs down below it. Well, this one because it's at an angle, it's not hanging below the axle, but it's also tucked in a way that it's that it's perfectly out of the way. Um, I can't believe they thought of that. You know, everybody either either positions it straight forward or straight up and down. 
and that's that's one of the genius things about this is that somebody thought we don't have to have it straight up and down we don't have to have it straightforward we can have it at an angle and just get everything together perfectly we got it where it's not uh below it we got it where we can still mount our our links right there above it it's tucked in there it gives us all the up travel that is one of the the most genius things about this whole rock mounter is the way that that servo and that truss is put in there yeah it's uh it's it's pretty amazing so what we're going to do guys we're going to make one last call for questions before we close this bad boy out so one last call I'll give you guys another minute or two uh we are not brothers we do look alike though <laughs> battle of the balds that's it oh man let's see here i think that's going to be it unless we get a few more uh yeah. we got the comedian eric hagan on here now yeah eric uh your podcast will be live in the morning buddy i'm really looking forward to everybody listening to it i had a great time talking to you i'll give myself one more plug if you're listening to this on facebook go subscribe to us on youtube if you're listening to us on youtube go like us on facebook it helps out the show big time and most importantly, listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to your podcast. Or if you're not familiar, just listen on YouTube and see the picture. See my bright, smiling face and lovely studio, and you get to see my guest every week in a setting just like this with Justin. We got uh, a, uh, a couple of questions in there uh, yeah. now. Someone says, how do you lock a diff? What's the difference between lock and unlock? So you can kind of show them what unlock is by turning the tires on yours unlock has a an open center differential a lock diff has a spool in it that will not allow it to do that so with a lock diff both tires are going to pull 100 percent of the time another then, question says are the foams good uh yes the foams are very good they're single stage foams they're they're almost perfect i mean they're soft but they're not so soft that they roll in the turns Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, I don't I don't know how they got so much right. Uh, it's that's pretty. Uh, they did great. I I I you know I I saw some criticism from people where people were like, oh, they're just you know people gassing it up. It's not as good as it actually is. Listen, lay masses. When you guys get your hands on one, you'll understand why you're wrong. Because this is awesome. It is a great truck. It is worth all the praise. The price point is awesome. Like man it's great it's awesome it's going to be a great machine uh and that's that's pretty much it i want to leave it to you. how do you feel about that you good yeah i agree i mean it, we we both have one and we're both asking where can i send some money to get more of these right we now so. yes and we were doing it the day we got them yeah. I, I i remember the, the the hey i got my package you know can i get some more you know yeah. i just remember that was the first conversation you and i both had yeah so, all right, brother. Well, we'll close it out. Everybody, thanks for joining us for an hour and 17 minutes of all of your Axial Racing Rift news. Uh, please keep up on the YouTube channel. You'll see all the videos and whatnot that we're posting. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, Justin, thanks for your time, man. And thank, thank you, you thank you to Axial Racing for all of your help and letting us be able to test these cars out. It's been amazing. Yes, thanks very much. And uh, if anyone has any questions uh, afterwards, feel, feel free to message uh either one of us and we'll do best to uh, answer your questions. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Good evening.